Hey everyone, it's Kelly. I am back today with a 12 by 12 scrapbook process video and this video is for Altenew's February 2020 new release blog hop. I'm going to start this video out with a Cricut Design Space tutorial because I want to show you how I created the background on my layout. So I'm starting out by going into the templates within Design Space and I am going to Photo Memories and then I'm going to select Scrapbook Layouts. This will insert a 12 by 12 square on the background and will just help me when I am sizing the different elements that I'm going to use on my layout today. I want to make sure that they are going to be proportional on my 12 by 12 scrapbook page. Next, I'm going to go into shapes and I'm going to select a circle. I want to slice the circle in half, so I'm just going to move it to the top left hand side of the design screen and I'm going to position it at zero, zero when you're looking at the X and the Y on the position on the taskbar at the top. And then I am going to resize the circle to three inches. I just wanted to make sure that I had everything set up to make it as easy as possible for me to know that I was cutting this circle exactly in half and by setting it to three inches it just made it easy for me to know that when I insert the square and I am going to change the color of the square so it's easier for me to see when I position it on top of the circle so you will see that in just a moment here. So back to what I was saying, once I have that color changed, I can position that square at one and a half inches and I know that it's going to be in the dead center of that circle because the circle is three inches. So it just makes it much simpler to know that I'm cutting the circle in half and that it's going to be even because I am going to use both pieces of that sliced circle for my layout today. So to slice that circle, all you have to do is select both of the layers, so the square and the circle, and then you're going to go down to the slice icon on the bottom right hand of the screen, and then that will create two half circles on your background. So I want this background that I'm creating to fill up a large majority of my 12 by 12 layout. So I have selected both of those half circles and I'm enlarging them. They're much larger than what I actually need them to be, but I just wanted to make them bigger so that way I had an idea of how much I could play around with the sizing of those. My idea is to place four half circles around the layout. So I'll have one at the top, on the right and left, and then one on the bottom. And that will create some windows in my 12 by 12 layout for me to be able to tuck some florals and just different elements in for my layout. So now I'm just working on getting those half circles positioned. I'm just duplicating them and then using the flip tool on the top taskbar to change the orientation of them so they are all facing in the direction that I'm wanting them to be. I'm wanting to create a square in the center of the layout because that is where I plan on positioning my photo. So once I have all of these half circles positioned roughly where I want them, I am going to select all of them and then use the bottom right hand arrow on those images just to shrink them down a little bit. I want to make sure that they fit within that 12 by 12 template that I put on the design screen. And every once in a while in design space, I don't know if it's my eyes or if it really is happening, I lose sight of my 12 by 12 template that's on the background. It's like the line blends in with the grid lines on the background. So here you can see I'm kind of zooming in and zooming out because I lost sight of it. I was having a hard time seeing it when I was trying to shrink this down. So I wanted to show you that you can change the color of the template if this happens to you as well. You just go down and click on the template on the panel on the right hand side and then you'll have the taskbar at the top will change and you can select a color. So now I can see it for sure. This will not be sent to the cutting mat because it is just a template. So when I'm ready to cut this, nothing will happen. It just makes it so I can see the template on the background a lot easier. I'm still working on getting the position of these half circles where I want them to be and I kept clicking on one of the half circles so I was losing all four of them that were grouped together when I did the select all so I ended up just going over to group on the right hand side group them together now when you group something together rather than just doing select all you can't move the individual shapes until you ungroup it but it's not a big deal you just unclick or you click ungroup on the top right hand side on that side panel but when you're just trying to shift things around, it does make it much easier. It groups everything together and you don't have to worry about clicking on one of the half circles and deselecting all of the images. 
Now I want to make sure that these half circles are symmetrical with each other. I don't want, for instance, the half circle on the left side to be higher on the page than the half circle on the right. I want to make sure that they're even with each other. So I am just using the position tool on the taskbar at the top. I'm just typing in where I want them positioned on the background. I do believe you could use the align tool for this as well. I haven't really played around with that too much because I find this to be a really easy way to accomplish what I'm doing here, but that's something you could definitely give it a try if you're trying to do something similar with a layout or with a project in design space. Now, one thing that is really important when you are using shapes on a background that you want to cut in a specific spot on your project is that you make sure that you select attach that is on the panel on the right hand side it's all the way down at the bottom what will happen if you don't select attach and you send this to your cutting mat it will just put these shapes wherever it can fit it onto the cutting mat and it won't be set up how you left it so here is an example of that so when i go back when i select attach and i send it now here i didn't make sure that it was sized to an 11 and a half inches because that is the largest size that cricut will cut so i just resized it to 11 and a half inches this is attached and you can see it looks just like it did on the design screen now another thing i wanted to quickly show you is how i knew what size i needed to print my photo because i am going to print my photo to fit within that square in the center of my layout so what I did is I just inserted a square and then I just grabbed a hold of the arrow on the right hand side and drug it down until the square filled that area and I looked to see how large the square was. Once I knew what the size was, I went into Photoshop and created a template and I do have a tutorial showing how I create a template for my happy planner and it is the same exact process. So I will make sure to link to that if you want to check out how I resize those pictures. But that is how I knew how large I needed my photo to be for this layout. All right, so let's move into the scrapbook process part of this video. Here I am showing you the stamp set that I'm gonna be using for my layout today. It is the Watercolor Blooms stamp set. It stamps these really pretty watercolor flowers, and then there's also some really nice leaves that go along with it. I did use the matching die set to cut all of those images out. Here you can see the background that I created. I did add some hand stitching detail around all of those shapes just to help draw your eye in. And I am going to use that yellow cardstock as my background. Altenew was also kind enough to send me a new self-healing mat, and I'm super excited about it. I needed a new one desperately. I really like to use those mats as a background in my process videos because it has a 12 by 12 square cut on it, so I know that my layout is within the frame of my camera if I keep it positioned there, so it kind of serves two purposes for me. So this is the photo that I'm going to be using for my layout today. It is a photo of my son and our two dogs. This was taken not too long after we adopted our dogs from the shelter. And he had come home from school one day and sat down on the couch and they both jumped up on his lap and they both just laid down right on top of him. And he was just in heaven. He loves these dogs. So it's an adorable photo. I was so happy to finally scrapbook it. It's almost two years old now, but I was just waiting for the right idea and the right products to use to scrapbook this layout. And I'm really happy with how this turns out. The idea for this layout is just as you see here, I was going to position my photo in the center and then I was just going to tuck all of these flowers and leaves in those windows that I created with that design that I set up within design space. So I'm just playing around trying to figure out what colors I want to use. I use some really bold colors for the flowers and I really like them. I like that they really pop off that yellow background. And I did stamp those leaves in both gray and green ink. And I like that there's a little bit of a mix of the colors of the leaves. I feel like it just really helps your eye kind of dance around the layout. And it just adds a lot of detail and a lot of interest to the background. So once I have all of those positioned, I'm going to use some liquid adhesive to adhere them down to the background and I leave them just like you see here. I was happy with how the colors were spread around and I liked how the branches or excuse me, the leaves kind of popped off the background when I'm adding the adhesive. I am making sure to only add it to the very tip of the leaf so that way the part of the leaf that you see kind of pops off the background. 
Now for my title, I am going to use these black alphas from the Live Your Dream scrapbook collection. This is by Altenew as well. And my title is going to be Cuddle Puddle. And I cut that title actually from a Facebook friend when I posted this picture on Facebook. She commented somewhere along the lines of what a cute cuddle puddle. And I thought, oh my goodness, I have to remember that for when I scrapbook this layout because it was the absolute perfect title for this layout. So I'm so glad that she said it like that because it's just absolutely perfect. That's exactly what it is. So I positioned those alpha letters on just to a piece of packaging because this photo paper, once something sticks to it, it doesn't like to come off. So I wanted to make sure that I liked how it was positioned before I just went ahead and adhered it down. And I decided just to go straight across the top of the photo. I thought that was a great place to put the title. It fit there well, and it just added a nice additional pop of black since my photo is in black and white as well. So now I am coming in with some enamel dots from Altenew and I'm just picking a few different colors. I'm going to keep them grouped within those half circles. So I'm not really mixing the colors of those enamel dots, but I like how it just adds just another punch of color and it just adds a little bit more texture, a little bit more dimension. I'm all about that with my 12 by 12 scrapbook layouts. I think that the more dimension and texture you can add, the more fun the layout is. Now this is another stamp set that is included in this new release. It is the dotted diamond stamp set. And I felt like I needed to add a little bit of journaling to this layout, but I wasn't really sure what to say. And this stamp set had the perfect sentiment. It's something like if something about picking flowers, I'd always pick you. I can't remember the exact wording and I can't read it here on this editing screen, but it was perfect for this layout. And I just used some Altenew crisp black ink and just stamped that directly onto my photo. Yes, in an endless garden of flowers, I will always pick you. So that is what the sentiment says. And I thought it was perfect. It filled in that empty space I had between the title and the subjects on the photo. So I really like how that worked out. And I did use my scissors to cut that sentiment because I needed it to be long. I am not afraid to cut my stamps. I can always smoosh them back together if I want to position them exactly as they were in the packaging. So that to me is not a big deal. But here are the still shots of this layout. I am so happy with how this layout turned out. I think it is so fun with all the different colors and just the different textures that are going on. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is part of a blog hop and Altenew has some great giveaways happening. So I will leave a link to my blog post in the description box below. You'll want to head to my blog to check out all the info for the giveaways. I'll be back again soon with a new layout and process video. As always, thank you so much for watching.